With the rise of data lakes, unstructured data storage, delta lakes, lake houses, and everything else, you might find yourself wondering if data warehouses are obsolete and not worth the time investment. I was perusing Reddit and came across a question along those lines, and I wanted to consider it and see if there was some merit to it. My company is having a Wild West ungoverned SQL instance that is used for reporting. They call it a data warehouse, but it's definitely not built by the book. It has dims and facts, but they are fully reloaded every time with no history, no referential integrity, and people can create, alter, update, and delete data. On the same server is data from lines of businesses with 400 tables and 600 views. So we can see a common problem. There's some attempt at a dimensional model, but it was likely overwhelmed with the demand for more data, which got piled in with no effort to structure it. Slowly changing dimensions are usually the first thing to go, they take extra time and effort to do well, so if there's no immediate demand for historical data, they usually don't get set up. There probably wasn't a clear understanding that a data warehouse is for analytical data, so when the business needed a place to store some of their operational data, someone assumed a data warehouse would be a great spot. So now it's commingled with transactional business data, and it spiraled out of control and is a unusable mess. One side note on referential integrity is that it's fairly common to not set up strict key constraints in a data warehouse. If the model and ETL patterns have an intentional design, the ETL can take care of the data integrity. Outside of this controlled data modification, the warehouse is read-only. So constraints don't really help and could potentially add overhead to complex ETL patterns. On the other hand, if your ETL isn't well designed, your users can modify data and your keys aren't clearly named and documented, then key constraints can still be a good idea. They go on with, we started capturing raw data in AWS Data Lake. After this, we are storing it in Parquet with history snapshots, derived columns, casting data types, and preparing raw data for analysis and consumption. This is pretty standard. I assume S3 for the data lake, Apache Parquet is a file format designed for data storage. Now it seems like they do a decent amount of transformation to clean the data and they'll refer to this as raw data, but at this point it's been transformed and modeled so that's not really accurate. It's normal to keep your raw unaltered data files in the data lake. Now the next steps will depend on your data consumers. If you're focused on operational dashboards and reports, then you'll do your data cleaning and transformation on a subset of the data, what's been deemed as essential for operations, and load that into a data warehouse. If you're doing more exploration and data science, you might want to clean the data into curated data sets and load them back into the data lake instead. They then ask, can't we just run the reporting analytics on the raw data in the data lake using AWS Athena? Basically running data on the OLTP model, is it worth the operation effort of maintaining a data warehouse? How about the flexibility of the end users? So Athena allows you to query S3 data lakes, essentially SQL on files. This will really come down to users and data sources. You'll still have the same good reasons to not report off of an OLTP data set. It's messy, it's not easy to navigate, it might not be clear to users what the data means, it might have conflicting data, and you might need to merge multiple sources together for the users. If the end users don't need any of this, or they just want to report basic numbers off of OLTP data, then it might not be worth the effort. But given the previous statement that the old data warehouse grew to 400 tables and 600 views, it leads me to believe that analysts were trying to solve for quite a few of these problems. They then add, the performance in Tableau is really good, way better than it is for the data model in the data warehouse. So this is really the key point and one where I think the wrong conclusion is drawn. And it's pretty common to see this. The assumption is reporting off a data lake is more efficient than reporting off a data warehouse. But I think the real conclusion is reporting off a clean data model is more efficient than reporting off a bloated model full of technical debt. You can imagine if they move to this S3 Athena solution, but don't solve for the problems that led to the 400 tables and 600 view data warehouse. Problems like access control, governance, most likely hard deadlines, understaffing, poor documentation. The described Wild West continues, but now in the data lake. And then picture five years from now, another engineer comes in, decides to build out a nice clean data warehouse, and then says Tableau is performing better on the data warehouse than it is on the data lake, which I think is the big takeaway. We tend to focus on tech stacks and architectures, but does it really matter which we pick if there's not standards, controls, and processes in place to keep the tech debt under control? 
If you enjoy breaking down a problem like this, be sure to give this video a like so I know there's interest in future videos along these lines. And to really understand if you can skip a data warehouse, you need to know exactly what a data warehouse is meant to solve for. So you'll want to watch this video to understand the use cases for the data warehouse.